You watch again there today. I'm Nabila Jamal. A big buzz now around the Samajwadi Party chief Akhilesh Yadav's entry into Uttar Pradesh poll fray. In there today, scoops exclusive details from where the SP chief Akhilesh can fight polls. Akhilesh Yadav is now mulling over four seats as his options to enter into crucial UP polls. Our next report gives you all the details. Akhilesh Yadav looks set to raise the stakes in the battle for Uttar Pradesh. For the first time ever, the Samajwadi Party chief could be running for MLA. Sources in the party indicate Akhilesh Yadav could fight from any of these four seats. Gunnor, Menpuri Sadar, Chibramau or Gopalpur. Gunnor and Menpuri Sadar are considered the strongholds of the party. SP Patriarch Mulayam Singh Yadav had become MLA from Gunnor twice. The biggest hint that he might contest elections came from Akhilesh Yadav himself. At a press meet, Akhilesh Yadav said his electoral contest may happen before Yogi Adityanath. I will say that the people of Azamgarh and the party will win. And you should fight first. You should fight with Yogi Ji. While elections in Azamgarh will be held in the seventh phase, Yogi Adityanath's home constituency, Gorakhpur, will vote in the sixth phase. Akhilesh had earlier said he would not contest the polls and would focus on every seat in the state. According to sources, the pressure on Akhilesh built after UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath decided to contest from Gorakhpur. अखिलेश यादव जी पर अब इतना दबाव था मुख्यमंत्री योगी आदित्यनाथ जी के चुनाव लड़ने की घोषणा के बाद उनके पार्टी कार्यकर्ताओं में बड़ी निराशा थी और ऐसे में आप कार्यकर्ताओं के दबाव के बाद अखिलेश यादव जी नामुकुर करते हुए चुनाव लड़ने के लिए तैयार ही हो रहे हैं लेकिन उनकी पराजय सुनिश्चित है अखिलेश इज एन एम फ्रॉम आजमगढ़ एंड ही हैज नेवर कंटेस्टेड इन अ स्टेट इलेक्शन इफ यू वर्ट टू कंटेस्ट द क्वेश्चन देन इज वेदर मायावती एंड प्रियंका गांधी वाड्रा would be also tempted to enter the fray. Bureau Report, India Today. It's now a big embarrassment for the Congress party ahead of Uttar Pradesh polls. Priyanka Maurya, the poster girl of Congress, Ladki Hu Lad Sakti Hu campaign is now all set to join the BJP. Maurya has now alleged that the distribution of tickets has rigged in the Congress and in fact the party used her face and social media following for their campaign but eventually backed out on their word. Congress has now hit back at Priyanka Maurya saying that tickets are being given only based on merit. Here's more on that. Once the poster girl of Congress, now all set to join the BJP. Priyanka Maurya, the face of Congress Ladki Hu Lad Sakti Hu campaign is set to dump the grand old party and join hands with the BJP. This is my photo. My name has been used in my whole way. My name has been used in my name. My face has been used in my name. My name has been used in my name. My name has been used in my name. सोशल मीडिया पे मेरे 10 लाख फॉलोवर्स हैं उनको इस्तेमाल किया गया है मुझे मोहरा बना करके मुझे फेस बना करके टिकट तो हमसे वोट तो लेना चाहते हैं ओबीसी समाज का लेकिन टिकट देने में इन्हें प्रॉब्लम थी पार्टी ज्वाइन करेंगी कल फास्ट योर यस मैं किसी भी ऐसे चाहत के साथ मैंने ज्वाइनिंग नहीं करी है ना तो मैं अभी कुछ सोच रही हूँ आज हम लोग आए थे यहाँ पे हमारी बातचीत थी और आगे मैं जो कंटिन्यू करेंगी वो आप सबके बीच होगा मेरे मन में आया कि महिलाओं के लिए कुछ करना और सबसे बड़ी चीज क्या कर सकते हैं हम आपको क्या आपको समझा सकते हैं कि आप अपनी शक्ति को पहचानोल्ड ओवर बींग डिनाइड अ कांग्रेस टिकट फॉर यू पीपोल्स प्रियंका मौर्य हैज हिट आउट एट कांग्रेस जनरल सेक्रेटरी प्रियंका गांधी वाड्रा कांग्रेस में मैं काफी समय से पूरी मेहनत से लगी हुई थी कार्य कर रही थी लेकिन जिस तरीके से मुझे आहत किया गया सिर्फ नाम दिया गया है कि लड़की हूँ एक स्लोगन लड़की हूँ लड़ सकती हूँ लेकिन लड़ने का भी मौका नहीं जहाँ पे मिलता ऐसे जगह पे समय अपना देते रहना मुझे समझ में नहीं आया मैं किसी भी महत्वाकांक्षा के साथ मैंने कांग्रेस भी ज्वाइन नहीं किया था और आज भी मैं पार्टी कोई भी ज्वाइन करना चाहती हूं तो मैं अपने मदद के दायरे को बढ़ाना चाहती हूं यही एक कारण है कि मैंने पॉलिटिक्स ज्वाइन की है अर्लियर प्रियंका मौर्य हैड अलेज्ड दैट कांग्रेस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ टिकट्स अहेड ऑफ यूपी पोल्स वाज रिग्ड 
हमारी स्क्रीनिंग हुई मेरे साथ 24 प्रत्याशी टोटल प्रत्याशी थे सबकी स्क्रीनिंग हुई सबसे बूथ कमेटी की लिस्ट मांगी गई और ऑब्जर्वर्स भी आए कहा गया ऑब्जर्वर्स की जो रिपोर्ट थी उसके अनुसार ये टिकट दिया गया है कांग्रेस हैज रिजेक्टेड द चार्जेस क्लेमिंग टिकट्स आर बीइंग गिवन ऑन मेरिट एक्चुअली देखिए टिकट्स कई लोग मांगते हैं लेकिन सिर्फ महिला होने के नाते किसी को टिकट मिल जाए ये भी संभव नहीं है हर जगह महिलाओं को दे दिया जाएगा तो ऐसा तो 403 है फिर 100 परसेंट की बात नहीं हमने 40 परसेंट की बात की कांग्रेस जनरल सेक्रेटरी प्रियंका गांधी इन एन अनप्रेसिडेंटेड मूव हैड अनाउंसड हर पार्टी विल गिव फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ इट्स टिकट टू वुमेन इन उत्तर प्रदेश but priyanka morya's charges of rigging in the ticket distribution process have come as an embarrassment for congress bureau report india today meanwhile the congress has now fielded model actor archana gautam as its candidate for hastinapur seat but the candidate here is being subjected to misogynistic trolling on social media india today spoke to archana who is now unfazed by that trolling here's her story turned politician Archana Gautam has got an early glimpse of the murky world of politics. Soon after the Congress picked her as his candidate from Uttar Pradesh's Hastinapur seat, Archana who has participated and won in beauty pageants has been subjected to misogynist comments by her political rivals. Hastinapur is a very prachin and puranic and pooja bhoomi. और उस पूज्य भूमि से जिस महिला को बिकनी के नाम से कोई अवार्ड मिला हो जो महिला एक मॉडल रही हो और जिसके ऊपर कई आरोप लगे हुए हों उस तरह की महिला को अगर कांग्रेस पार्टी अपना प्रत्याशी बनाती है तो हिंदू महासभा सिर्फ इस बात का विरोध कर रही है कि कम से कम उन्हें हसनापुर जैसे पूज्य स्थान से इस तरह की मॉडल को अपना प्रत्याशी नहीं बनाना चाहिए था ट्वेंटी एटीन मिस बिकनी इंडिया विनर इज अनफेज backed by party leader Priyanka Gandhi Vadra Archana is taking the attacks on the chin Hastinapur mein jo chunav lad rahi hain unhone bahut sangharsh karke apna jeevan banaya hai wo mahila sangharsh kar rahi hai kya keh rahi hai ki main seva karna chahti hu main janta ke mudon ko uthana chahti hu main vikas ki baat karna chahti hu ki kis tarah se Hastinapur ko main aage badhaungi to aap unse ye sawal kyu nahi karte क्योंकि आप उनको हल्का बनाना चाहते हैं सिर्फ क्योंकि वो महिला है अगर वो पुरुष होती किसी भी पार्टी की होती तो मुझे नहीं लगता कि आप इस तरह के प्रश्न उनसे करते प्रियंका दीदी ने मेरा बचाव नहीं किया है प्रियंका दीदी ने हर उस महिला का बचाव किया है जो देश के लिए लड़ना चाहती हैं और आगे बढ़ना चाहती हैं और अपने लिए आवाज़ उठाना चाहती है उस महिला को स्ट्रॉन्ग बनाया है उन्होंने जो मतलब जो हमारी बेचारी जो बहनें हैं वो अपने घर तक सीमित रही हैं और आगे बढ़ नहीं पा रही हैं अपने जो ख्वाब हैं वो सवार नहीं पा रही है समाज के डर से तो उन्होंने उसका बचाव किया है हर लड़की को कपड़े पहनने का अधिकार है आप किसी को ये नहीं बोल सकते कि भाई उसने छोटे कपड़े क्यों पहने हैं या उसने सूट क्यों पहना है उसने साड़ी क्यों पहनी है आप किसी का कैरेक्टर उसके कपड़ों से जज नहीं कर सकते हैं कि वो वो छोटे कपड़े पहनती है तो ये लड़की कैरेक्टर लेस है तो ये गलत है ये मतलब एक समाज में जो दिया हुआ मैसेज है वो बहुत गलत है तो इस चीज़ से हमारी भारत को आगे बढ़ना चाहिए भारत की जनता को आगे बढ़ना चाहिए The voters of Meerut said their voting doesn't depend on the candidates professional choices. Jo unke kapdon ko lekar toll kiya ja raha hai ye Bharatiya Janata Party ke log hain inki niyat mein hamesha khot rahi hai aur ye jo jitne bhi log is tarah ke hain ye sab Bharatiya Janata Party ki IIT cell se jude hue hain aur aise hi log jo hai mahilon pe bhi jo hai unhone atyachar pehle bhi kiya hai aur isi tarah se jo hai unki team ek wahan pe work kar rahi hai Bharatiya Janata Party ke logo ki jo usko jo hai bewajah jo hai mudda banati hai. Some of Archana's political rivals have also extended support to her in the fight against misogyny. ये कपड़े अपने किसी के व्यक्तिगत मामले हैं इसमें कोई अगर कोई संवैधानिक प्रतिबंध है तो उस पर कुछ कहा जाए बाकी क्या करें महिलाओं का मान सम्मान होना चाहिए महिलाओं को उन्हीं के मान सम्मान के लिए उनके रक्षा समय जो कुछ हो सकता है वो काम करना चाहिए. Archana's resolve is strong. But the personal attacks on the actor turned model has rekindled the debate on the falling standards of political discourse in India. 
Bureau Report, India Today. Our politics continues between the BJP and the Congress over ED raids on Punjab Chief Minister's nephew. The BJP has now demanded Charanjit Singh Channi's resignation, accusing him of looting Punjab. BJP has also reminded Channi that FIR was lodged in the case in 2018 under a Congress government. However, the Chief Minister alleges political vendetta against him, saying that there is deliberate pressure being mounted on him not to contest polls. In fact, Channi has accused the centre of misusing central agencies against him during poll season. He's also gone on to say that Captain Amrinder Singh and the Badals are behind the raids on his family. However, the opposition has now hit back. Captain Amrinder Singh has asked Channi to stop blaming him for his family's crimes. Aap Kunwana, Arvind Kejriwal has also targeted the Chief Minister, saying that he has done wonders in 111 days. <laughs> उधर का रेड भी थी ए एफआईआर भी मेरे पार्ट जैसा कोई नाम नहीं टोटल ए दे विच मनु सौन वास्ते की बड़ी पूजी साजे से रची गई चौबी घंटे उन आनु अंदर बंद करके इंटरोगेट किया गया ते हर कोशिश की थी गई कि वो मेरे आज नाम किसी तरह पसार में नहीं Now, South Indian states have been recently witnessing unprecedented spike in COVID cases. Karnataka and Kerala are the worst hit states. Meanwhile, the situation in Delhi and Maharashtra seems to be slightly improving. For the first time since January 9th, COVID positivity rate in Delhi has dropped below 25% mark. Whereas in Mumbai, BMC has said that COVID situation is under control. Here's more on that. Maharashtra and Delhi, the third wave is surging in South India. Karnataka and Kerala are among the worst hit states in the country. While infections are rising at an alarming rate in Karnataka, some politicians have advocated relaxing the curbs. Chief Minister Basavaraj Bommai will chair a high-level review meet on Friday to decide on curfews. The anticipation is we are expecting more cases. Luckily, the severity is not there. The numbers are becoming more, but the severity is not there. And uh, the illness period is also it's come down to two days, three days, maximum two to three days. And it's safe and uh, not much of problem. The beds are still vacant and people are not you know, getting hospitalized, no severity, ICU. There's not much of burden. Cases have also risen in Kerala. The state is recording over 30,000 cases in the last 24 hours. The state government has said that both Delta and Omicron coronavirus variants are contributing to the ongoing surge in daily cases. Government data shows there has been a 50% jump in hospitalization in Kerala over the last week. ICU occupancy is up 29%. There has been a 10% increase in patients on ventilators. Occupancy of oxygen beds are up 41% during the week that ended January 17. When you consider the data from January 12 to 18, mm -hmm. so this much increase is there. That means it's less than 1%. So it's not that alarming and again we have a uh, when you consider the ventilator occupancy it's, uh, the total occupancy is, comes around 11 percent the situation in delhi and mumbai seems to be improving but it is time to remain cautiously guarded so um, delhi and mumbai have hit their peaks sir, in your opinion uh for taking an inference with regard to that one has to wait for three weeks because any three time point data is required for taking an inference about a trend. So if you are asking about what is the trend, I would say that we should wait for two more weeks. Okay, so two weeks, not two days, two weeks before we then say that Delhi is out of the woods essentially. Exactly, because two days would be too short a time frame 
to take an inference about the trend of the infection and the trend uh, in terms of its rise or fall. COVID positivity rate in Delhi has dropped below the 25% mark for the first time since January 9. But testing has also come down from over 1 lakh a few days ago to around 50,000 currently. In Mumbai, the BMC has told the Bombay High Court that the pandemic is now under control. The ICMR's own projections show that if a new variant doesn't emerge, then post-March 11, things could look up. We could take three months' time. So from 11th of December, one could always expect, you know, 11th of January, then 11th of February, and then maybe by mid-March, one could start seeing the fall uh, or the decline in the, in the rising number of cases. But the whole country is not going to behave uniformly. The mm. states would differ from each other in terms of seeing a peak and then decline. The Omicron variant has changed the course of the pandemic and that's why the government's response has also changed. The Indian Council of Medical Research says that this wave is expected to last for three months starting the 11th of December and expects some relief post the 11th of March. But nothing really is cast in stone and this virus really has its own ways of surprising us. In New Delhi, Sneha Mordani for India Today. Now, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has declared that United Kingdom's Omicron peak seems to be over. The declaration here will only mean that several COVID restrictions will now be lifted. Wearing face masks will no longer be mandatory outdoors. People will no longer be asked to work from home from next week. Boris, who uh, who's also scrapped mandatory vaccine certificate rule now for large gatherings. In fact, United Kingdom was one of the hardest hit countries in the Europe. After a massive spike in daily cases, the country has now begun to see some light at the end of the tunnel. 94,432 COVID cases were recorded in the last 24 hours in UK. The figure has now gone down by at least 38.9% as compared to the last week. Now, the lifting of curbs comes even as several parts of the world are seeing a massive surge in COVID cases fueled by the Omicron variant. Now, after the series defeat against South Africa in tests, India suffered another loss at the hands of the hosts, this time in the first ODI at PAL. Chasing 297 for victory, KL Rahul's men lost the match by 31 runs despite 50s from Shikhar Dhawan, Virat Kohli and Shardul Thakur. Here's how it all transpired. Oh, little Nick. Wave, really. Yaniman Malan out, caught behind. Deeply regrets his hand goes straight. Quinton de Kock bowled off Ashwin. Aidan Markram run out trying to steal a single. Oh, I think he's gone. I really. Quinton de Kock. Having won the toss on a sluggish drops. wicket, South Africans were in a spot of me. bother at 68 for three. But then came Rossi van der Dussen. Along with captain Temba Bavuma, Rasi van der Dusen not just stabilized the innings but ensured South Africa's scoring rate picked up. Oh, there was a bit of a Even as Bavuma played second fiddle, van der Dusen showed why he's rated so highly in the 50 overs format. The duo put together South Africa's second highest ODI partnership against India, a 204 run stand that floored the visitors. Back of a length and it's banged away for four. Both oh, batsmen also got to their criminal. hundreds He's in the process. Up into the ring and While Bavuma took his time, Shot getting to his Emma. century of 133 balls, Van der Dusen made up for the deficit by notching up his ton in just 83 deliveries. Two centurions. Even as Bavuma perished in the penultimate over, Fireworks from Van der Dusen ensured that the hosts posted 296 on the board. In response, Shikhar Dhawan got India off to a decent start. Even as Captain KL Rahul departed for a 17 ball 12, Dhawan and Kohli ensured India kept the scoreboard ticking. Shot. The duo put together 92 runs for the second wicket. One of the great. Oh, 
Dhawan, who was looking good for 100 though, was removed by Keshav Maharaj for 79. Former captain Kohli too recorded his fifth 50-plus score in last seven ODI innings in the African nation. He in fact overtook Sachin Tendulkar to become the Indian with most ODI runs overseas. But his wicket right after his 50 provided the Proteas with the opening they needed. One. Wickets kept tumbling one after the other as India's middle and lower middle order failed to offer any kind of resistance. Up in the air, this could be out, it will be out. Yeah. Shardul Thakur did show his batting prowess, registering his maiden ODI 50. But it was too little too late as South Africa took a 1-0 lead in the three-match series. By South Africa. Sports Bureau, India Today. On that note, it's a wrap on this edition of the Bulletin. For further news and updates, you could log on to indiatoday.in. You could also download our app for more. I'm going to come back with news and updates on the other side.